stand up right now and let's go ahead and enter into a time of worship. How many is ready to worship the Lord this morning? Yes, amen. How many is ready to shake off everything from the week this morning? Yes. I am too. I'm really excited. So Lord, we welcome you in this place right now. God, we are here for you this morning. We lift up our eyes to the hills from which comes our help, God. We are here.
deeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are i know
voices. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, hallelujah. We lift your name up this morning. We honor you for who you are this morning, God.
God is calling you forth. If you need a miracle this morning, right now, right now is the time. The Holy Spirit is moving and you need a miracle. You come running to this altar right now. Come running right now. If you need a miracle in your life, come on. Come on. You need a miracle right now. Come on. Thank you, Lord. I knew I heard the Holy Ghost this morning. Come on. You need a miracle. Come on. Come on. Receive your miracle this morning. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. As they're singing this song right now, I'm going to lay hands on you this morning, and you're going to receive that miracle in the name of Jesus from Jesus because he's the miracle worker. He is the miracle worker. I want you to receive that miracle right now. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. And you have faith right now. And it's God, I need you to move in my life. I accept that miracle. I receive that miracle right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, receive your miracle now. power from the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus we speak recreative power to reform this finger today right now because that's the miracle working power that you do Lord we thank you that she is restored 
her hand is restored her finger is restored and stronger than ever in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we receive that miracle in Jesus name amen and amen now listen listen to me listen don't you let the devil discourage you now your faith is in Christ by Christ and in his miracle working power Jesus is the one that heals you Jesus is the one that has made you whole Jesus the Christ the anointed one the Son of God the Son of righteousness that rises with healing in his wings has touched you this morning has touched you this morning listen if you didn't feel anything you don't have to feel anything but if you did feel something praise God for that but if you didn't feel the miracle working power of God, nevertheless, it's by your faith that you have been made whole right now. You walk away from here with your miracle and you don't let the devil or nobody take that away from you, nor the doubt. Get the doubt out and begin to speak your faith and thank the Lord this morning. It is by your stripes, Lord Jesus, that I am healed. Give him praise in the house. Come on, somebody. Give him praise for your miracle this morning. You you got your miracle. You got your miracle. You got your miracle. Somebody shout, I got my miracle. Come on. Come on. The devil don't want you to say it. I've got my miracle. I've got my miracle. Because the miracle working God gave me my miracle. Come on. Give him praise. Come on. Sing it again. Come on. Come on. Sing it again. Sing the chorus. Come on. Come on. Peel the pain off the wall, brother. Come on. Come alive in the name of Jesus. You're alive this morning because of Jesus. in here this morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before, before you have a seat, listen to this. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, whatever struggle, whatever you've been going through, whether it be a medical situation or a diagnosis that you didn't like, a sickness, an infirmity, whatever it is this morning. Jesus said, Surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, 
but believes that those things he says will be done, you will have whatever that you say. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. How many in here this morning is brave enough to shout and say, I receive my miracle healing this morning. <laughs> the devil is not going to take it away. I'm sticking to Jesus because he's my healer. Listen to this. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. You say, I believe with all my heart, not only doubt. And sometimes we doubt. And if you doubt, just start speaking faith louder than the doubt. Amen. God understands. Just like the man in Matthew, Mark 9, he said, Lord, I believe you, but, and I believe in you, but help my unbelief. And Jesus did. If that's your prayer this morning, God hears from a humble heart. And don't leave this place today that you don't take your miracle with you this morning. This is a house of miracles. You've heard that prophesied here for so long. But now so be it and walk in that miracle in the name of Jesus. And by this time next Sunday, I'm going to give you about a minute for every one of you that came forward or so for you to testify of that miracle of the Lord Jesus Christ. How about that? Give him some praise in the house. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Now I want to call forth as they're coming. If you want to bring your tithes and offerings, come on right now. And thank you, worship team. Thank you, Sister Bonnie, Sister Anna, Lauren. Awesome, awesome presence of God. <clears throat> Listen, you know, I, I was back here worshiping the Lord just as you were this morning. <clears throat> and this was so amazing. Do, do you not, do you agree with me that that the Holy Spirit presence here is just amazing. And the worship that we have here is just off the chart. I'm telling you, you don't go many places like this. You don't, and I'm not speaking evil of nobody or nothing. You, you don't get to enjoy many, many places like this in God's presence. And, and as, as I was worshiping God, all of a sudden, I began to see just a cloud of smoke and all kind of people coming in those double doors back there. And the Lord wanted me to speak to you this morning. If you believe what I've just said, and I saw this, I saw people coming in. They didn't know where to say it or what to do and how that people that are here, the faithful remnant that comes all the time, you were getting up and saying, you can sit here, you can sit there. These were people of all different kinds of people. These were the, the broke and the busted and the, and, and, and the affluent and the ones that, are, that have and the ones that don't have. It was all kind of people, the young and the old and, and, and all in between. And you were getting up out of your seat and you were saying, you can have my seat. And then I began to see the, the deacons and some of the elders beginning to serve here. Uh, and they were getting out the folding chairs and setting in the aisles and, and even bringing them up front and along the walls and people were setting down everywhere. But see, the Lord said to me, tell this to this remnant of believers. And if they truly believe that, how can we receive something so great and not tell somebody about it? And, and you see, I believe that if we could get people to the house of God and then begin to experience that this is a house of miracles, I believe there would be great salvations and we would see this place just overflow. And that's not, that's not a preacher just saying, oh, come on, let's see if we can get everybody's rear ends in the seat and fill this place up. But this is the heart of the Father to see that multitudes of people that are not here that are born again 
Because I'm going to tell you, I know what's going on outside these walls. There's a lot of satanic things going on. And it's like, oh, pastor, don't say that. That happens out in California. That happens in some of those places like Oregon and New York and all that kind of stuff. Listen, if those people know that you care, then you're at least going to invite them and say, I just want you to experience what I experience. Every Sunday morning, the Holy Spirit, they don't have to understand. You're welcome. You don't have to be dressed up no certain way. Don't give me that excuse. And I'll even pick you up. Bring you here. Carry you home. Do we really want people to, exp to experience a house of miracles? Then let's at least tell them. Tell them about Jesus. Reach out to them. Say, come on. I want you to, en I want you to enjoy God's presence like we do every Sunday morning. Do you receive that this morning? Yeah. Would you say amen? Amen. 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 Come on, uh, children's pastors, y'all come on. And we're so thankful. Give them a hand as they come. And all of our children. Look at these kiddos. I, you got to watch, man. Man, let me. And it's got a light on it. What is that? Superman or something? And my goodness, it's going off. Looks like rock and roll days with strobe lights. It's awesome. Yeah. Good morning. Love this guy right here. He is such a lover, isn't he? Yeah. All the time. All these, all these children. They're such loving and careful and care, caring people. So, Father. We thank you for our children and children's pastors, and we release them into your care this morning for them to receive your implanted word. We bless them, God, not only with your word, but let the Holy Spirit move in their hearts and in their minds by Christ Jesus the Lord and give them a mouthpiece in their schools and wherever they go in their homes to tell others about the love of Jesus because you've empowered them to do the same. We bless them and Release them now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Are you glad to be here this morning? Amen. <laughs> amen. You know, my offer still stands. If you help fill this place up when, it, when it's filled up to capacity, I'm going to preach on the top of this church and we'll meet outside at the foot of the cross. <laughs> you don't know about that, do you? Well, I, my wife knows me, I think, better than y'all do. <laughs> and, he will and, do it. He, and, and, did you hear? He'll do it. <clears throat> he will absolutely do it. Good to see you and good to see all of you uh, that's come this way and all of you that are watching via Facebook this morning. <clears throat> I was studying about this, asking the Lord, what is it? I don't know how many sermons I've preached here in 13 years. It's very rare that I ever preach one again. You know, preach it over again. I have a few. But the Lord gave me something fresh. And the title is, It's Great to Be Alive. It's Great to Be Alive. Would you pray with me, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus and through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I ask you to help me to declare your word to your people this morning, to those that are watching. And Lord, that this would change their soul and their outlook on life and definitely who they are in you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll be reading mainly this morning from the New Living Translation, and Pastor Daniel will certainly have that on the screens. And I'll be reading from Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11 through 14 at first. <clears throat> if you will listen intently this morning and receive this word, believe this word, and leave here owning this word. This will change the way that you think about everything in your life. And you will begin to live your purpose 
you will begin to look to Jesus and at other people in a different way. Paul said, when you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. Now, when something is cut away, it's been cut away not to stay. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. In other words, you were buried into Christ's death. And you were dead because your sin, the old you were, was cut away. But you were raised with Christ to a new life. Question is, are you living the new life? Or do you think that you're still the same person? Because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins. But you're not a sinner now. And because your sinful nature was not yet cut away when you was a sinner, but then when you came to Jesus and made him your Lord and Savior, Paul says, then God made you alive with Christ. Would you say that with me? With Christ, I'm alive. With Christ, I'm alive. For he forgave all of your sins. All of them. Every one of them. He canceled the record of the charges that was against you. And he took it away by nailing it to the cross. In other words, the old you is canceled out. It does not exist anymore, the old you. You're dead. You, you are erased. You are erased. And the only way that you can think that you're still that same person is two ways. You operating in your flesh and pride are believing the lies that the devil's always going to tell you that you're the same old person. The question is, who are you going to believe this morning? The, re the report of the Lord, your report, or the devil's report? I believe we need to begin to believe the report of the Lord. If you with me, say amen. amen. You see, my friend, if you are born of the Spirit of God, the old you is dead. Why do you keep acting like it's not? Did you know I do that sometimes? But it's not an excuse. I have no excuse. None. Absolutely no excuse because of the power of God that's been imparted and filled inside of me and you. We have no excuse. Amen. None. The OU is dead. And you've been made alive by Christ and your life lived to the full is hidden in Christ with God. Therefore, you must daily consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus said that he is the vine, you are the branches. He promises if you remain in him and he in you, you're going to be bearing a lot of fruit. You cannot bear a lot of fruit if you're living in your old sinful ways and believe in the same stinking thinking about yourself you see it's great to be alive you believe that it's great to be alive I'm so thankful that I'm alive in Christ Jesus amen can you give him a praise you see today in the world that we live in there are far more people who are barely living than believe that it's great to be alive. Far more. All you got to do is listen. And with all that's happening, not only in the world today, but locally in our own community, in your home, at your workplace, in the marketplace, and certainly in the church. And I'm talking about the church at large, not only here, but the church at large. Your heart, soul, and mouth should be screaming 
It's great to be alive. It's great to be alive. It is so easy to just gripe and complain and fault find and criticize. But when you are connected to the vine, you got a lot of fruit to, to give away. And if you don't stay connected to the vine, guess what Jesus said? You're going to dry up on the inside. You're going to dry up. You see, the signs, we cannot afford to keep going the same path that gives us a dry life. That's not on fire for God. That's not in His presence. Why, Pastor, why? Why, why, why? Why, why? Reminds me of an old song, you know. I don't even remember it, but it does remind me of an old song. You see, the signs of the time of Jesus' re return is upon us. I think everybody in this house, and you, you are watching by Facebook, you will agree with me. The signs of the time are here. But what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? You know, and, and, and I'm not talking about doing something to be saved. I'm talking about because you are saved. Amen. The Apostle Paul told Pastor Timothy and the church that in the last days we would see perilous times. We're having perilous times. People don't want to talk about it. They just want to give me a feel-good sermon. Give me a feel-good or I'll go somewhere they will. We're living in perilous times. People's souls are corrupted. They're blaspheming anything that is holy. Even in the schools. I know some folks that's left some area schools and are homeschooling their kids or sending them to a very expensive Christian school because of the mess that's going on in some of the schools. And I'm not talking about high school. I'm talking about middle school. It's happening. Why? It starts in the home. And if mom and daddies are not following Jesus Christ in the home, it is so easy for the devil to captivate the, the minds and souls of our sons and daughters that are in those schools. People are blaspheming anything that's holy, unruly, disobedient. They're unthankful for anything. The majority, no natural affection, men being with men and women with women. women. And it's now so popular... I just read a report and then watched a news uh, a cast that even in Tennessee, the state that borders Alabama that Vanderbilt are, 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 are supporting and having a lot of these tra transgender changes. Of, 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 I'm not talking about grown-ups. I'm talking about teenagers that don't know who they are, that they're born a boy, but they think that they're a girl. And then we have people like that in our military forces and our woke group that's trying to lead and they're not leading well are saying this is okay. And people are leaving the services of the United States of America because of this mess going on. It's time to make a stand. People are openly proud of the unholy acts they commit. They're not ashamed of it anymore. Not at all. The, the, people are demonically deceived, calling evil good and good evil. Jesus tells us that the signs of His soon return would be a time, listen to me, filled with many claiming to have the truth, but will deceive many. The, the, the time will be filled with wars and threats of wars and nations and kingdoms will rise up against each other just like it's going on now with Russia, Ukraine, China, possibly uh, uh, Taiwan and, and all these other people and Iran and, 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 and things that are going on even currently now in Jerusalem. People would be going hungry and starving because of food and water sh shortages. Have you checked the grocery store soon? Have you checked it recently? I mean, and, and we act like nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. And there would be an escalation of earthquakes and storms and all these kind of things that are happening now all over the world. And during this time, Jesus, before His returns, that Christians would be hated unlike never before. I, I used to think it was popular to be a Christian. It's not too popular anymore to share your faith. People want to shut you down. 
you know, you know, oh, don't say nothing about it in the schools, but I'm so proud of our schools right now. Have you seen some of the Facebook posts from Phil Campbell and Double Springs and Haleville and all the students that are coming to the flagpole and praying? It is amazing. I mean, someone was reporting over 120 people. Give them a hand this morning. Stand up for Jesus at the school. And hopefully one of these days, all of us adults can stand there with you. If you'll invite us, we'll be there. Amen? See, Christians, Jesus said, would be harassed, arrested, punished, and even killed because of their witness of the gospel and their moral stance of the principles of God's word. Jesus also warned that many would give up and they would portray and begin to hate one another. Also, false prophets would increase and fool lots of people, especially those that don't know what the Bible says. You just want to hear somebody tell you something, but you don't know for yourself what the Bible says. We are living in times of great deception. You need to know what the Bible says. Remember, Jesus said this, pastor didn't, so it's got to be the truth, but I'm not a liar, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Jesus said also false prophets would increase. Not everybody out here is a prophet of God, my friend. But people are flocking to all of that. Now, I'm not, I'm not against prophets because they're part of the fivefold ministry. I'm not against them at all. But if it don't match up with the word of God and if they're prophesying something and they say thus saith the word of the Lord and it doesn't come true, then they are a false prophet. And you say, Pastor, are you not going to give them just a little bit of grace because we're under grace? No. When you say thus saith the Lord God, this will happen. That's exactly what Agabus did in the book of Acts. It should be done the same way. Amen. That doesn't mean that you can't prophesy and say what God has said. Or give somebody an encouraging word. But don't tell me thus saith the, the Lord that this is going to happen on such and such a date, on such and such a year. And then you believe that and it doesn't happen. Then a lot of times in the body of Christ, well, we, I, I guess it's maybe next year. Maybe he just missed the year. Let's give him a little grace there. I think we need to hear the truth. We need to know the truth. We need to walk by the truth and stay connected to the vine and be the branch that Jesus has called us to believe. You believe that? Let's say amen this morning. The Bible even says that Evil and darkness would multiply like never before. So all of this shouldn't be a surprise to you and I. It's a great time to be alive, not to dread. It's a great time to be alive. But God, but God right in the middle of all this darkness and evil, the gospel of the kingdom of God would be preached like never before all over the world and that's how God because of evilness and darkness that God would raise up a remnant he would begin to speak and speak through the remnant through the power of the Holy Spirit with signs wonders and miracles for a great awakening revival and reformation not only to the USA but for the world do you believe that say amen You see, you are the remnant, the remnant of God. You're his bride, and the bride is beginning to move. The bride's beginning to stand her ground. The bride's beginning to open her mouth, pray, witness, reaching the lost, and those have lost their way. Am I describing you? Let me read that again. The bride, the bride the, is the remnant bride. She's beginning, I'm talking to you, 
to move, to stand her ground, open her mouth, pray, witness, reach the lost, and those that are lost their way. And let me tell you this, this begins in your home, in your family, and with people. See, somebody gets this idea that I've got to go out here and preach to everybody in Haleyville when you're not starting at Jerusalem, and then Samaria, and then Judea, and to the furthermost parts of the earth. It starts at home, my friend. If you can't witness to somebody in your home and your family and see them get saved, why do you want to go out there? God wants, that's his plan for us and those people that you work with every day or those people that you see in the marketplace. You see, the bride is getting excited. Are you excited? Are you excited? It's great to be alive. You see, people are not going to be moved if they look at you and you call yourself a Christian and you seem like you're dead. You're just dead. It's no life. People don't even like being around you. Boy, I have just licked the red off of some of you suckers. <laughs> I'm glad that you laughed. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. <laughs> you see, I believe that the bride, and that's you. Say, that's me. He's talking to me. I'm the bride of Christ. Even though I'm a man, I'm his bride. I'm the bride of Christ. I believe that the bride right now, if you're truly the bride of Jesus, you're cleaning up your wedding garment that's been stained for a long time with your flesh. you cleaning up that wedding garment that's stained with your flesh. You've been refined with the oil and you're trimming your lamps. And if your lamp is full of the oil, it's got to be full of the oil of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, then you are calling out to others. You can't help it. If your lamp is full with the oil and it's trimmed and it's burning bright, you cannot help but to tell others about the love of Jesus Christ and what Christ has done for you. You better have the oil in your lamps and fired up and get ready because our Lord Jesus is coming. And the question is, are you ready? Are you just going to wait another 10, 15 years? Because you're having too much fun in the flesh right now. Isn't it a great time to be alive? And maybe some of you are thinking it'd be a greater time to be alive if you just hush. But I promised you I was going to tell you the truth. You need to read your Bible. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, check me out. Search the scriptures like the Bereans did and see if what I'm telling you is the truth. You see, when I say these things and say, is that describing you? Are you excited about the Lord's return? Is your lamp full of the oil? And is it trimmed and are you shining bright for the Lord Jesus Christ? When I say that, what are you thinking right now? I want you to think about what you're thinking right now. Does this seem that I'm talking about somebody else? Surely that's not me. But maybe someday this could be me too. It's like, what are you waiting on? If you've been born again and filled with the Spirit of God, what are you waiting on? See, this applies to everyone under the sound of my voice if you've been born of the Spirit of God. This mindset should describe your heart and your actions that it's a great time to be alive. It's a great time to be alive. You see, Jesus' father said in Luke chapter 21, verse 25, and there will be strange signs in the moon, the sun, the stars, and here on earth the nations will be in turmoil. Oh, don't tell me that. That's what the Bible says. i got to tell you that. The nation's going to be in turmoil. They'll be perplexed by the roaring of the seas and strange tides. 
The roaring of the sea, that, that, that's a, an expression that means troubled waters all over the place. Strange tides. We're not just talking about the hurricanes and all. People will be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth. Men's hearts and women's hearts will fail them. For the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with power and great glory. So when all these things begin to happen, stand and look up for your salvation is near. Isn't it great to be alive? It absolutely is a great time to be alive. Are you ready, though, to meet the Lord? Are you ready? You see, never before in my lifetime has there ever been such a time as this other than what I remember happened in the early 70s during the Jesus movement. Never before has so many people in our nation are being saved that is exceeding the numbers of the people that was born again and saved back during the Jesus movement, according to evangelist Mario Morello. There are more people today that have exceeded salvations than the last move of God that happened in the 1970s. But see, you're not seeing it right here. What's the problem? It's not God. We have more churches than most people per capita have right here in Winston County. But, but just like us today, there's maybe half full. I've talked to many pastors and that's the way it is. And we're not seeing what's happening and then people believe, well, we got to go to the streets. Well, yeah, we got to go to the streets. We got to have meetings out here, feed people, and, 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 and give them the gospel. And some of the, I'm, I'm not against all of that. But did you know I've seen more miracle working power in my lifetime of 46 years now being born again that's happened under the houses of God than any other place that I've ever been? Do you ever wonder why people don't come to church? You could explain it away, but I believe this. is that people live under the power of Satan that feel whether they've been saved or not saved. And they feel condemnation, regret, and shame that maybe when I get good enough, I could come back. That's a lie. You'll never get good enough. You just need to get back. Amen. 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 Never before has there ever been a time in history other than the Jesus movement of the early 70s that so many people now are coming and being saved. It's the truth right here in America. And get this, never before in history has there ever been since in 2,000 years, in 2,000 years, there has never been no more than what they are now of just hordes of people coming to the Western Wall in Jerusalem and to the Temple Mount and praying and fasting before God because they're great expecting for Messiah to come. Did you know that is true? Never before in 2,000 years, something's up and something's about to happen. It's great to be alive and God wants you to be a part of it. Can you say amen? amen. Never before in 2,000 years, never before in 2,000 years has there ever been a kosher red heifer found that complies with Numbers 19. Now, I've heard stories about the red heifer for years and years, and a lot of it was not true. But this is true. Not only have they found one, they have five in Jerusalem now. And, and you may say, well, Pastor, what in the world has that got to do with the return of Jesus? I'm going to tell you. 
A red heifer was needed to meet the requirements of the Old Testament. Read Numbers 19, 1 through 10. It was to help accomplish the purification of the Israelites from uncleanness. Specifically, the ashes of a red heifer were needed because red heifer ashes were necessary for the purification rites held at the temple. Many have regarded the appearance of a red heifer today as the heralding of the construction of the third temple and the return of Christ. They will be a third temple. Read the prophecies of the prophets and also read the book of Revelation. It is there. There is where the Antichrist will stand in the holy place and declare himself as God. The rabbis in Israel, the priesthood in Israel, and the Jewish people are excited to begin now the third temple and are very excited and expectant of the Messiah will come. Of course, we know he's already come, but he's coming a second time. It's a great time to be alive, and are you ready? You see, it's a great time to be alive if you're ready and you're looking for his return. You see, if you're born again, say, filled with the Holy Spirit, you will see the kingdom of God. The kingdom is now, right now. You are in the kingdom for the kingdom of God is in you if you've been born again. The kingdom of God produces, listen to me, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is a description of your life. Righteousness, peace, and joy. You also have fruit of the Spirit and spiritual gifts to use and give away to other people. That's why you have them. Isn't it great to be alive? And the more fruit that you produce, the more you got to give away. See, there's no time of just wallowing in our past and in our flesh. You don't want to meet God like that. And the truth is you don't have to meet God like that. Because you are God's kingdom and the kingdom is in you. Therefore, you have righteousness because of what Jesus has done for you and imparted into you. You are the righteousness of God. You are wholly sanctified and made whole because you have believed, received, and confessed, and follow and obey the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Does anybody believe that or am I preaching myself happy? In Luke 9, 23... Jesus said, listen, this is so good. I've preached a little bit of this before, but you know, it just gets gooder and gooder when the Lord stops you and says, I want you to research some of these words here. I want you to go deeper. Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. Amen. Now he was saying this to some people there was already his follower and some people that were not following him, that were hanging out. We got a lot of people hanging out, but not following. A lot of people hanging out, not following. And when they didn't get what they expected for their flesh needs, they soon go and go back to the same old life. You must turn from your selfish ways. You know what that means? Selfish ways is a Greek word. It means hanging on to your past. I just told you a while ago you don't have no past if you've been born again. And hanging on to your fleshly desires that are rooted in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the self-centered pride of life that births an entitlement mentality that the world and the church and everybody in it owes you a life or something that's going to make you happy, feel loved, and accepted. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? My friend, the only one that can give you that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only one that can give you happiness righteousness and joy and meet your needs. Then Jesus said, take up your cross daily. We don't like the preaching of the cross, but it is the power of the gospel. We don't like it though. 
But it's the power of the gospel. But not Jesus isn't saying, I want you to take up my cross. He's saying, you got a cross. So what does your cross mean? Take up your cross daily. It's a Greek word that means capital punishment. Figuratively, it is exposure to death daily. Of one thing, your flesh and your fleshly desires. Because you are purchased with the precious blood of Jesus. You don't belong to yourself anymore. Now, does that mean that you're not here to have some fun? No, you're supposed to be the most fun, loving, excited people on the earth and telling other people, hey, it is great to be alive. But also, the cross, Jesus has already borne. And what he's done for you with his atoning blood at the cross should be enough. And then he says, follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you're going to lose it. In the Greek, and I, and I don't mean to sound like a scholar or something because I'm not, but I love word studies, and this is what this means. What in the world does it mean for you to try to hang on to your life? He's talking about not the life that you're living in Christ, but he's talking about so many people try to hang on to their old life that is dead and buried with Christ. So he said, if you try to hang on to your life, this is speaking of the old you, your old life, your old nature with its old ways, fleshly desires, emotional needs due to rejection, lack of love, lack of acceptance, living in guilt, shame, regrets due to an unrenewed mind and a lack of faith in the word of God. Jesus said, if you live like that, you're going to lose in this life. But if you give up your life for my sake, my sake. Do you ever wonder what it means, my sake? Jesus said, if you'll give up your life for my sake. It's a word that means sozo. If you will give up your past, even you've been born again, you've been saved, and you know that, but you're still living by the old you. Listen, you've been given the nature of God now. You don't have a fleshly nature anymore, but you will still live by the flesh if you don't renew your mind with the Word of God, Romans 12, 2. So what does Jesus mean? You will save it. If you give up your life, you will save your life. This means you will live delivered, protective, healed, preserved, saved. You will do well, and you will be made whole. Can you believe that? If you give up the old you and the old you ways of what you've always done and renew your mind and believe God's word, God promises you, you will live delivered, protected, healed, preserved, saved, do well, and be made whole. That means physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Can you say amen? Paul said this well. My old, in Galatians 2.20, Paul said, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul said, I'm crucified. I'm dead. I am absolutely dead. So if you're a follower of Jesus and you just keep struggling with the same old, same old going around the mountain and you're singing the song again and other people are singing it for you, she'll be going around the mountain when she comes. I'm off key there. Or she'll be coming around the mountain when she, or I could say, he'll be coming around the mountain when he comes. He'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around. See, that's not what God wants us to do. It's just keep circling the mountain and die in the wilderness. You see, the flesh dies in the wilderness. That's where the flesh is supposed to be left. So if you're a follower of Jesus and you just keep struggling with the same old, same old, going around the mountain again and again, what is hindering you? You ever think about that? Why do I struggle like this? I believe that the biggest hindrance within believers today from experiencing the kingdom of God that's in you and living the abundant life 
are two things. Now, I know some of you probably preach a sermon on two other things or five other things. But this is what the Lord gave me. The two hindrances, I believe, in the church today and in other people's lives is unforgiveness and offense. Unforgiveness and offense. In Ephesians 4.32, the Apostle Paul told the Ephesian church, Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you. You see, look what God has done through Jesus for you. You've got to be focused on that. He, through Jesus, has forgiven you of every single thing. Past, present, and future. Yes, everything. So please remember without God's forgiveness, mercy, and grace, you and I would go to a devil's hell for eternity. We all need to let that seep in right now. You have been set free from sin, rebellion, grievances, and everything that was before Christ in your life, within your old life. It's all under the blood. It's washed in the blood, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. It is gone, so you are clean right now. So why would you want to live in your past? Don't let your garment be soiled with unforgiveness and offenses. Forgiveness is truly setting people free that don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. That is awful, nasty folks and done some awful, wicked, nasty things. But forgiveness is not saying what they did is okay. And, it, it, and it's not saying, well, God, I guess it's okay. So I'm going to forgive them. No, forgiveness is setting people free that don't deserve it. It's not about them and what they did or said or didn't do. It's about you and how you're going to respond to God, to Jesus, and to the Holy Spirit. And to the Word and to the thems that have hurt you, used you, offended you, was not there for you, and those who have spoken evil of you. Is that not what Jesus told us to do in Matthew 5? And it's not easy. I've been there. One time in my life, it took me seven years. I'm not saying this is going to take you seven years, and I hope to God not, because unforgiveness led me into darkness for seven years, not serving the King of glory. Done so many wicked things. You see, they were wrong in what they did and said, but you don't want to be wrong by not forgiving them. You ever hear what I'm about to say? Two wrongs don't make a right. You ever heard that, Sister Linda? Yep. Two wrongs don't make a right. Two wrongs don't make a right. But we just say it because it sounds cool. I'm not saying it today because it sounds right or sounds cool, but it is right. Two wrongs don't make a right. Let me say Jesus, though, and you, Jesus and you make two rights, which equals righteousness and oneness with him defeats all the wrongs. You and Jesus makes it right. Defeats the wrongs. Your past is to forgive them. Why? Why should I forgive them? Because Jesus even said in the Lord's Prayer, if you don't forgive them, your heavenly Father can't forgive you. That's a hard saying. Because see, back in my past, I wanted to say, but God, what about them? What about them? What are you going to do to them? You want me just like James and John? I was like James and John. Lord, I just... Pray that you send down fire from heaven and destroy these folks that have hurt me. Your part is to forgive them. Why? Because you are God's righteousness. And righteousness does right. By the Spirit and the Word, you are to forgive them. Why? Because it's a great time to be alive. You see, forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself. Do you ever think of it that way? Forgiving someone else that have hurt you terribly is a gift to you because you are in Christ and who He is is in you. If you choose not, not to use that gift, you'll be ruled, listen to me, by bitterness and offense and live in the flesh. That is why some are always in turmoil, struggling within your marriage. Finances, always thinking about this when you lay down at night. 
You're struggling even with your children sometimes. In your work, you're unhappy. There's no joy. And it goes on and on and on and it don't stop because all you see in your mind's eye, especially when you lie down at night, is the one or ones that have hurt you. They offended you. The one that's walked out on you. The one that has rejected you. The one that molested you. The one that has called you to live in shame, regret, condemnation, and the what ifs most of your life. If that describes you, it's time to forgive them, give it to God, and let go. And if you don't, my friend, then expect the next 10, 20, 30, or 40 years to be the same old, same old. My friend, when you don't walk in forgiveness, you will easily be offended. For, un for unforgiveness breeds offense. And you're looking at someone that most of my life I've been easy to be offended. I mean, the devil knows what strings to pull, okay? Somebody said something to me recently, and it offended me. I couldn't wait to tell my wife about it, but did you know what? didn't do any good. I done broke uh, the law of the Spirit of, 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 of Christ Jesus because the law of the Spirit tells me in, in uh, Titus 3 and 2 to don't speak evil of no one. And I couldn't wait till I told Bonnie, you know what he said about me? And you know what? It wasn't the truth. It wasn't the truth. His mind just messed up. But you know what the Lord said? You're to forgive him. Because the only one I was hurting is me. And my wife don't need to hear it. She can't do nothing about it except go beat him up. And then she'd be sinning just like I did. And don't mess with her. She'll beat you up. No, not Bonnie. She's too sweet. <laughs> you see, you don't mean to, but you just get angry at the world. Sometimes you get angry at the church. And oh, you just want to talk about the church, how bad it is. Let me tell you something. You're talking about the body of Jesus Christ. You're talking about His bride. If you're talking about the church, the church is not the problem. You're the problem. It's the truth. So why don't you do something to make it better? Instead of griping and complaining about it. Somebody just turned me off Facebook. <laughs> and see, what it's doing to you, being offended and living, living in unforgiveness... You're angry at the world, the church, just about everybody, everything. You even get angry at your dog, kick your dog sometimes, slap your cat. You snap at your spouse. Oh, me, did he go there? Oh, man, or women. You're just angry. I'm telling you why. You're walking in unforgiveness and you're easily offended. Oh, your spouse, even your kids get on your nerves. You have no patience. In which patience is the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And occasionally, even here in Haleville, I'm not talking about in Atlanta or Chicago, you have road rage. Man, if I had one of them rockets like Arnold Schwarzenegger has in some of them movies, I, or, or James Bond, I, I'm telling you my age, I just press that button and that rocket would come out. <laughs> just get that guy off the road, you know. Did you know your pastors actually said that before? Get so angry, sitting in Atlanta, with all them lanes, pulling an RV. And me and Bonnie, I mean, we're ready to get home. We've been gone for two weeks. I'm ready to get home, sitting in Atlanta for two hours. And it ain't moving, but inch by inch. It's easy to get into road rage. But is that the Spirit of God? Sometimes you have no patience, road rage. It's very hard for you to pray. And actually, you don't pray anymore. Except, Lord, help me. You don't read your Bible like you once did. And you wonder, why? And you blame everybody else. Everybody else's problem ain't you. The Bible's even become boring to you. And you still are wondering, God... When am I going to get my breakthrough? What about me? And the Lord 
If you'll listen, like I heard when I complained like this, he said, what about you? I thought you've said this is all about me. And if you see it's all about me, then it's all about them, not you. <clears throat> you see, today, it's time to be honest with yourself and get honest and clean with Jesus Christ. Remember, please remember you are God's light that illuminates the darkness within others' hearts. Yes, that's you. Every one of you under the sound of my voice are God's light that illuminates others' hearts, that helps them see the truth, that sets them free from the devil's shackles and a destructive life. You are the salt that brings flavor into lots of distasteful people and their distasteful situations. So please remember that everyone around you is looking at you, at you to see how you act. See how you speak and react to every situation that you encounter. Why? Why are they looking? Because you say you are a Christian follower of Jesus. They want to know if the God that you believe in is real. And if he is real, they're begging you, show me by the way you live, speak, and treat others. That's what other people are looking for. That's why we see so many people in our community that are not following Jesus because we're not shining bright. We're not being salty in their lives. You see, within our culture, even in the church, it seems that it's so easy to blame others for your unhappiness, your misfortune, and your trouble. It's their fault. It is their fault. It's their fault. Summer, it's their fault. I'm just kidding with you. It's not their fault. Did you know you're just about as happy as you want to be? It's so easy to blame others. If you're a believer, follower of Jesus, and you feel these following things, and I'm about to close, come to the keyboard, Bonnie. Now listen, don't, please don't get distracted right now. This is the most important part. If you feel this way, Nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you or wants to be your friend. If you feel left out, others are not treating you like old so-and-so. And if you feel left out and believe that others have their own little cliques. You ever thought that? Oh, they just clickish at that church. I've had that even said here. We ain't got no cliques at Solid Rock. We don't. If you believe in that, you believe in a lie. We don't have no cliques at Solid Rock. We don't. The only click we have is the presence of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Oh, pastor's just got his favorites. He didn't sing my birthday today. Because I didn't know it was your birthday today. But I'm offended. Really? That's going to keep you out of church? Because I forgot it was your birthday? Or maybe I forgot to congratulate you on something that, like these boys, they won another awesome game for Haleable the other night. Homecoming. Wonderful. And I didn't say anything about Double Springs and they won theirs. Now the whole team at Double Springs offended if they're watching. You know, I ain't God and I'm certainly not Jesus and I don't remember everything. You feel left out. And, and you feel like you don't get recognized like you should. Well, I've been coming to that church I don't know how long. They just don't recognize me. They don't recognize me like I need to be recognized. You know, I'm an important person. And you feel like that you don't get the opportunities like others get at church or maybe where you work. Let me remind you something. Serving and faithfulness is the gateway to opportunity in God's kingdom. You're not willing to serve, you don't have no business on the platform. 
I didn't say that. Jesus did. That servanthood is the gateway to opportunities in my kingdom. That's what Jesus said, not Pastor Benny's kingdom. My friend, if this describes you and you're not happy with your life that Jesus has given you, then you're probably living in the flesh or by the flesh your old life and living in unforgiveness and you're easily offended. And the Bible says, here's the truth, that you are accepted in the beloved, that you are to live by faith, the Word and the Spirit, and your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You've been given dominion over the devil and authority. You've been given dominion on this earth and all authority over the devil and demons and over all the weapons of the devil and no, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You're here for God's reason. You're here for God's reason, not yours. You're here for God's purpose and not yours. <laughs> Your assignment, get this, is to love. And if God doesn't change directions, I'm going to be talking about what it means to love. And hopefully we'll bring the high priest mannequin back in to the service next Sunday your assignment here is to love I'm not just talking about just in church I'm talking about outside these walls of the church your assignment is to love serve shine witness heal the sick cast out demons and raise the dead you can't do that or live your purposes or, tr or nor truly believe that it's great to be alive if you refuse to forgive others and live in the flesh it's time to forgive the hurts and the offenses today and call on Jesus and the Holy Spirit to help you right now and bring it to the altar right now as we stand. Crucify your flesh. Embarrass your flesh. Get this hurt out of you and the offenses and the unforgiveness. And today you'll realize it's great to be alive. Would you come to Jesus as they begin to play and sing right now? This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Where every demon trembles. Where we proclaim. are full of faith. You have our full attention. You have the final say. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come
the miracles. God called Sister Angela to the altar and said, if you'll come to the altar and give this to me, I'll heal you. She's had lupus for 17 years. She ain't got lupus no more. You felt the power of God. You felt the power of God shoot through her body. She is healed in the name of Jesus of lupus. 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 Go. Destroyed. Go. Demolished. In the name of Jesus. God, we give you glory in this place. This morning. Come on. Come on. Somebody get excited this morning. God's moving. for your blessing in the prayer today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you through the power of the Holy Spirit to bring revelation to everybody's soul and heart this day under the sound of my voice that they are light and they are salt. They're your witnesses. And for what has happened today, a miracle of 17 years of lupus was healed by you, Lord. Is it, God, that there's more people here in our city, in this county, in our region that needs that healing touch from you, Lord Jesus, and they too can experience your presence your healing, your love, and your mercy, and your forgiveness. I pray, Lord, that this week and even today, they would begin to invite people and tell people what is happening here because we want others to experience what we're experiencing right here at Solid Rock. I ask you to do that through the power of the Holy Spirit in them. Move them, Lord. Move them. Move them. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord God lift up His countenance upon you. And give you shalom, shalom. His peace that surpasses all understanding. Let Jesus the Christ Messiah rule and reign in your hearts and in your lives. Amen and amen in the name of Yeshua. I bless you. Do not forget to be back during this time of repentance, deep awe and repentance, through this week of Yom Kippur. And Sister Myra Vickery will be teaching the last session on it this Wednesday night. You don't want to miss. Invite somebody and be here. In Jesus' name, I release you. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.